Honey, my bucket list doesn't say make a pretty awesome grilled cheese sandwich. What's on your bucket list? Places to see, things to do, and foods to eat? Well, then let's take a look at 15 foods you need to eat before you die. I'll have the steak and a side of onion rings with lots and lots of sour cream. Homemade whipped cream. Mothered in whipped cream. You can't deny that there's a definite joy when taking a can of store-bought whipped cream, giving it a shake, and spraying your mouth full of that sweet, fluffy stuff. And if you've never tried it, then you need to ASAP. However, while this delivery method might be cooler, when it comes to the actual whipped cream itself, there is nothing better than making it yourself. Oh, wait, wait, you only got whipped cream in there. You gotta take a bite with all the layers. And it is so, so, so easy. All you need is some whipping cream, some sugar, and vanilla. Grab a mixing bowl and an electric mixer, and in five minutes, maybe less, you will have homemade whipped cream. Grab a spoon or just stick your fingers right in the bowl, because all you need is one taste and you'll immediately understand why it's on this list. You don't know what you're missing, Bonnie. Breakfast for dinner. Eat up. Breakfast for dinner is anarchy. Most of us have done it, but this is something everyone needs to do at least once, if not 100 times. Pancakes, French toast, hash browns, eggs, breakfast sausage, and of course, lots and lots of bacon. All of that is a great way to start the day, but that doesn't mean it's not a great way to end it, too. Look at McDonald's. They started serving breakfast all day because so many people were asking for their breakfast items throughout the day. Sure, Sheldon Cooper would probably never do it, but he also can't eat French toast in the morning on oatmeal day. Want some French toast? It's oatmeal day. Next French toast day, I will make you oatmeal. The truth is, there's no reason not to have breakfast for dinner. In fact, we all know how sleepy a big breakfast can make us. And unlike in the morning, heading to bed after a big breakfast in the PM is much more socially acceptable. And if you aren't super hungry but still want to join the breakfast for dinner revolution, why not a bowl of cereal? Pancakes plus cereal. Cereal Panky Bibimbap. You are a breakdancing crew? Yeah, the Bibimbap Boys. <laughs> it was dope. If you have a Korean restaurant near you that you are always walking by thinking how you should go there for dinner one night, do it. Although first, take a look at the menu and make sure they serve bibimbap. Bibim means mixing ingredients and bap refers to rice. Look at the ingredients. Order this dish and you will get, depending on the restaurant, a bowl of rice topped with namu or kimchi and gochujang, soy sauce, or tanjang. Often a fried egg is placed on top as well. Break the yolk as you mix everything up and enjoy the added creaminess it provides. Oh, and did we mention that the dish is served in a hot stone bowl? The bowl takes the dish to the next level, keeping the dish warm and crisping up the rice at the bottom of the bowl, which just goes and adds another layer of crispy goodness to the already delicious culinary experience. Trust me, you should take my advice. Real maple syrup. I love syrup. If you don't live in the northeastern United States or Canada, this one might not make much sense, and you might ask yourself, what is fake maple syrup? However, many of you would be asking this question while reaching for a plastic bottle of general pancake syrup. And that is when all Canadians and Northeasterners would all say in unison, that is. If the only thing you know about maple syrup is the fake stuff, then you are missing out on one of the true joys of life, real maple syrup. We're talking maple syrup that has actually been derived from the sap collected from real maple trees. The real deal. I mean, wow. Not that cheap, bogus syrup sold in a vulgar plastic bottle. To say that the real deal is 10 times better than that imposter syrup isn't doing it justice. The difference is like night and day, and once you try it, it's almost guaranteed that you won't be able to pour anything else on your pancakes or French toast. And while we're at it, it's really okay if you pour it all over your entire breakfast plate. Eggs, bacon, sausage, potatoes, it's just that good. Pancakes! Pancakes! No pancakes. Show us some love and tap that like button. It'll only take a sec. Thanks. And next up, ramen, not from a package. 
What are you talking about? Oh, this is amazing. Wow, you're a really good cook. You don't have to be a starving college student to enjoy a nice bowl of ramen. While you might not eat it as much as you once did in your college days, it's safe to say most of us have at least a pack or two sitting in our cupboard. You know, in case of a major noodles craving, you can never be too prepared. But did you know that ramen doesn't just come in plastic packages or pre-packaged styrofoam cups? There actually are Japanese restaurants you can go to that make fresh ramen. Look at all of these. Someone in Japan married their bowl of ramen. And let us tell you that a homemade broth with nori, slices of pork, and fresh noodles, ones that weren't rehydrated using boiling water, is a delicious and comforting culinary treat. It'll make you forget all about that flavor packet that once made you so happy. Nothing will ever make me happy again. French fries with mayonnaise. You have a life preserver. What? Your French fries drown in there. People in France, Belgium, Canada, and a few other places in the world are already aware of how amazing mayonnaise is on French fries. But there are still plenty of folks who still haven't gotten the memo and refuse to even try it, sticking to their stubborn assumptions that ketchup is the only condiment that a fry needs. Can I get some ketchup? Sorry, no additions or substitutions. But the bright, creamy flavor that mayonnaise brings to the table is a truly wonderful complement to a tasty french fry. And we need to point out that this is in no way meant as a knock to ketchup in any way. In fact, for those truly in the know, you know that a ketchup and mayonnaise combination is maybe the most perfect landing spot for your dipped french fry. But if that sounds too adventurous for you, just start with the mayonnaise and work your way up from there. Extra ketchup! Fresh, self-picked fruit. I understand you like to pick fruit. You ever pick something bruised and pear-shaped? Most people love fruit, but the fruit you get at the grocery store, while good, is never as good as it could be. That's mostly because of the time it takes for the fruit to get from the field to the grocery store. Either it's lost some of its freshness, or the farmers had to pick it when it wasn't perfectly ripe, allowing it to make it to the store in a properly ripened state. Sweet, delicious, fresh fruit salad. The point is, nothing can beat the fresh fruit picked right off the vine in a perfect state of ripeness. And yes, if you can make it to a farmer's market, it's often the best option to get close to fruit perfection. But picking the fruit yourself is even better, whether it's apples, cherries, strawberries, blueberries, etc. Making the trip to a local farm that lets you pick a basket of fruit for yourself is a trip everyone should make at least once in their lives. I think we both need to get a life. A fresh avocado and tomato. You're an avocado now. That's true, but you're missing the point. I'm safe. We all know the joy of great guacamole and that a BLT sandwich isn't the same without the tea. But have you ever simply sat down and taken a moment to spoon feed yourself avocado right from the skin? Or served yourself a plate of nothing but a sliced up tomato? Well, you most definitely should. Sometimes less really is more, even when it comes to food, and these two items are great examples of that. Avocado? I don't know how to pick out an avocado. You don't need lots of sauces or extras, just a fresh and perfectly ripe tomato or avocado. And a little bit of salt. Yes, too much salt in your diet isn't good, but a little bit sprinkled on top of your tomato or avocado will punch up the flavor of both items and take them to the next level. Found tomatoes have extremely bold flavor, but you got to get them to cry. Steak tartare. Tell me what I want. Steak tartare. <laughs> oh my god, you're good. The tartare you most likely know of are salmon and tuna, as they are the most common. With sushi being such a popularized meal, the idea of eating uncooked fish doesn't phase most people. However, the idea of chowing down on uncooked meat seems to go against everything we have been told. What's the point of eating raw meat, mother? And as such, it is understandable that steak tartare is something you may have been avoiding up until now. But we should tell you that you are missing out on something truly wonderful. Now, this doesn't mean you should go out to your local grocery store, grab some meat off the shelf, rip off the plastic, and take a big bite. No, please don't do that. Eating just any type of raw meat can make you sick. 
However, if it's high quality meat and it's prepared properly by someone who knows what they're doing, then those risks are removed and you can savor every single bite without any worries. I'd love to smile and work with raw meat. Tomato soup and grilled cheese. Here's your soup. Oh, soup, right. Uh, yeah, right. Just like peanut butter and jam, tomato soup and grilled cheese are both great on their own, but they reach a whole other level of deliciousness when brought together. Unlike the combining of peanut butter and jam, we are not saying that you have to put your tomato soup on your grilled cheese sandwich, although the opposite is quite a tasty combination. But if that seems a little too outrageous for you, just enjoy them as a meal together, but separate. Grilled cheese sandwich and tomato soup. Tomato soup because, you know, the tomato soup is like the blood. A bite of one, a spoonful of the other. The flavor profiles of both items truly do work well together, and the absolute warm, crunchy comfort of this particular meal is hard to match. And please, just once, at least try dipping the sandwich in the soup. The crunchy grilled bread holds up well to the soup without getting soggy. And we know that lots of people enjoy ketchup with their grilled cheese. And what do tomato soup and ketchup have in common? We are proud to present this farm to table blah 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 beside blah blah blah. Cacio e Pepe. Thinking Winston was taking me to a fancy Italian restaurant, but then he was gone. Don't be intimidated by the fancy Italian language. Cacio e Pepe literally translates from Italian as cheese and pepper. This one is so simple yet so delicious. While we in North America often have these ideas that a good pasta dish needs to be full of sauce and meat piled on with heavy ingredients, some of the most amazing tasting pasta dishes are actually very simple and pared down and cacio e pepe is one of them. It's exactly as the name suggests. Pasta with a cheese sauce topped with black pepper. That's it. Tasty and delicious. You will find some recipes that suggest multiple cheese combinations, and the noodle used might vary as well, although it's almost always a long noodle. Spaghetti, fettuccine, tagliatelle, etc. But other than that, this fantastic pasta dish is all about mastering the simple preparation. It has been described as an elevated mac and cheese. And with that in mind, allow us also to suggest a little cracked pepper on your next bowl of Kraft mac and cheese. What's the magic word? Pasta. Raclette. What's another food that we like? When you think of Switzerland, the first things that come to mind are things like skiing, political neutrality, and banks where you can safely hide your money. But the Swiss also have a solid culinary history, and one classic dish everyone should try before they head to that great kitchen in the sky is raclette. For the uninitiated, raclette is potatoes with melted cheese all over them. Mmm, tasty, tasty! And to add even more yumminess, it is generally served with pickles and charcuterie. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? And to make things even better, you usually get to cook it yourself by melting the cheese at your table. You can also buy raclette sets that let you create the traditional dish at home. It's easy, lots of fun, and most importantly, as tasty as it sounds. Hey, Brian. Rupert and I are just having a spritzer and some cheese in advance of the performance. I don't think so. Freshly made ricotta. You delicate melange of tomato paste, ricotta cheese, ground meat, and pasta. Ricotta cheese is a delicious staple of many Italian dishes like manicotti and, of course, lasagna. It is also something that most people never even considered making themselves because they assume that it's super complicated to do. Well, it isn't. All you need are a few simple ingredients and about a half hour of your time. There are recipes all over the internet, and they all involve pretty much the same basic process, so pick one that looks good to you and go for it. So, make my own food? As a general rule, anything you make yourself is going to taste better than buying it at the store, and ricotta is no exception. Making your own noodles isn't that hard either. Talk about impressing everyone at your next dinner party, or maybe even more importantly, all of your jealous foodie Instagram followers. Hashtag food envy. You're a way better photographer than I am. Sweetbreads. Sweet! If this was a list of the top 15 foods that sound gross when you find out what they are, sweet breads would probably be on there as well. However, despite their peculiar ingredients, they are still a delicious item that you need to try at least once. 
Telling you what they're made of will probably make it harder for you to take that first taste leap, but we'll do it anyway. So here goes. I can't promise anything. Sweet bread isn't bread at all, and it's not sweet. It's actually made of two different glands of young calves or lambs, the thymus gland and the pancreas gland, found in the throat and the heart, respectively. Not exactly the kind of sweet treat you expect. You see, we can assume that it got its name to entice people into eating it. Because, let's face it, if a menu listed calf pancreas gland as an appetizer, it probably wouldn't be flying out of the kitchen. Wow, but is it worth it for that taste? <laughs> lardo. When I grow up, I want to be a lardo on workman's comp just like Dad. While the idea of eating back fat might have vegetarians running for the exits, for those of you who are still curious, take some time to try lardo. The back fat in question comes from pigs and is cured over time, adding a few spices for anywhere from a few weeks to months and months. These things sometimes take some time. And what you get in the end is apparently melt in your mouth delicious. Lardo has its origins in Italy, going back centuries. For the most authentic lardo experience, you could take a trip to the Tuscan hamlet of Colonata. They have been making lardo there since Roman times, so let's just say they kind of know what they're doing when it comes to this cured delicacy. Honestly, that went better than I expected. Hungry for more? Tap or click for more great videos, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.